If you've ever struggled to learn the mechanics of a TTRPG, you're not alone. RPG systems lay at the unique intersection of language and math and often rely on the ability to understand abstract concepts filtered through math and chance. Learning any system, especially a new one, can often be a challenging experience, and we often rely on others to communicate their understanding and interpretation of the rules. Rules which more often than not require revisiting the same chapters more than a couple of times to gain a better understanding. It is completely it's completely normal to read a section of an RPG rulebook or the whole book and not fully understand everything, or anything for that matter. Whether you're a solo learner or benefit from a collaborative learning process, this video aims to help you understand what is often one tricky element of the cipher system the difference and use cases of edge and effort. If at any point during the video you find something confusing or have a question, please feel free to ask in the comments section and I will do my best to respond in a timely manner. Or if it requires something more substantial, I may consider doing a video on the topic. Almost anyone who has ever played a Cypher System game, be it Numenera or one of the many other settings MCG has produced, has likely heard the terms edge and effort get conflated, confused, or become the topic of a rules discussion that sometimes slows the narrative down. Rules questions should never be discouraged at the table, nor should the rules be expected to be self-explanatory. RPGs are a collaborative experience and many of us benefit from learning together, be it at the same time or on our own. But by developing a more intuitive sense of the rules, we can help each other out when the inevitable questions such as how do I use my edge or how do I use effort come up. To start, let's ignore what effort is right now and specifically focus on edge. Edge and effort often get tangled up at the table, but what often needs clarification is not what separates edge from effort, but rather how edge interacts with your stats and how it differs from your stat pools. Page 22 of Numenera Discovery begins the discussion of how Edge functions and its relationship to character stats in the system. In the Cypher system, every character has three stats, Might, Speed, and Intellect. These largely work as one would expect them to, and each of these are divided into two components, your Pool and your Edge. As written in Numenera Discovery, your pool represents your raw innate ability, while your edge, perhaps more abstractly, represents knowing how to use what you have. Pool points are spent when a character activates an ability or uses effort. This means that your character's stats are finite resources. Each time you tap into your character's unique abilities or try to make tasks easier to accomplish, your character moves closer to exhaustion. Your pool points then not only represent your character's innate abilities, but also your limits. In theory, edge represents how efficiently you can use your might, speed, or intellect. In practice, it functions by reducing the pool cost any time your character activates an ability or applies effort to a task. Edge, as the name implies, suggests that your character has an edge in one of the three abstracted stats of the cipher system. It exists alongside your stat pool, and a high pool is always enhanced by a high edge in that related stat. With an understanding of what pool and edge represents, we can now look at how effort factors into this equation. One of the key ways in differentiating effort from edge is that effort is a function. It's something you actively apply during difficulty tasks. While edge is a reflection of a character's internal stats, a representation of capacity or how capable your character is in accomplishing something, effort is the act of trying to accomplish a task with greater ease. We apply effort in levels to reduce the difficulty of a task, thereby lowering the number one needs to hit on a d20, potentially all the way down to an automatic success. Edge influences how efficiently our characters can do this by reducing how much our stat pools are taxed by abilities such as casting esoteries or placing effort into a task. Again, it's helpful to understand that effort is a function and edge is part of your stats. They affect each other, but they do different things. Effort affects the difficulty, while edge affects your character. Effort is external, while edge is internal. Effort lowers the difficulty of a task, while edge lowers the overall cost of spending that level of effort, or activating a special ability. Applying levels of effort requires tapping into your character's stat pools, and edge influences how taxing that expenditure is, eventually allowing players to apply levels of effort for free if they so desire. 
Numenera Discovery, as well as the Cypher System rulebook, describe Edge as reducing the cost when spending points from a stat pool or reducing the cost of applying effort. One alternative way of conceptualizing Edge is to see it as pool points that never diminish under normal circumstances. These are points you can use toward the activation of special abilities and applications of effort. Edge gets spent on the activation of a special ability or the application of effort, leaving a stat pool to be used after Edge or for another ability, as Edge can only be applied to a single function of your character, but more on that later. Let's use an example. A second tier jack named Caddy is attempting to crack into a rich noble safe in the city of Ushvan in the beyond. The GM has set this at a difficulty 3, requiring a 9 on the die to succeed. Hitting a 9 is not too tall of a task, but the player wants to make sure they do this right. The lock on this safe, as determined by a successful understanding Numenera check by the Nano in her party, will fuse the entire safe shut if this fails. Cracking the safe is declared an intellect task, and with an intellect pool of 17 and an intellect edge of 2, Caddy has a lot going for her. She's trained in lockpicking and has equipment that the GM accepts as an asset to the task. The training and asset work to lower the difficulty by two steps, down to a level 1, requiring a 3 on the die, but Caddy doesn't want to leave any of this to chance. The noble who this safe belongs to happens to have a secret about her family stowed away in this vault, and the party has traveled all the way from the city of Jirek to get this information. Failure isn't an option for these characters. Along with her training and her thieves tools, Caddy's player applies a level of effort to the task in order to drop this down to a level zero and thereby guaranteeing success. The first level of effort for any task always costs three points from the related pool. Caddy puts her edge of two in intellect towards this cost, leaving one point to be deducted from her pool. With a pool of 16 out of 17 and the task lowered to zero, Caddy cracks open the safe and recovers the data pad with the prized information on it. But something goes wrong. Via a GM intrusion, the GM reveals that the safe was rigged with an alarm system. Armed automatons emerge from trapdoors in the ceiling, and Caddy has to find a way out. As a part of a new action, she activates Vanish, a first-tier jack ability that costs two intellect points. As this is an entirely new action, based on the GM's ruling, her edge of two covers the cost of activating the ability, leaving her intellect pool untouched at a 16. If Caddy didn't have an edge in intellect for this scenario, both actions would have totaled up to a cost of five, three points for the effort used to succeed in unlocking the safe, and two points for the activation of Vanish, reducing her pool down to a 12 after the scenario without Edge. This demonstrates clearly what is meant when the book suggests that Edge represents knowing how to use what you have. Caddy has a high intellect pool, but her Edge influences how efficiently she's able to use it to crack into a safe and activate a special esoteric that relies on her mind. This scenario also demonstrates the power of GM intrusions to create interesting narrative scenarios, as Caddy's cat burglary skills take center stage when she not only breaks open a safe but vanishes before the optical sensors of the automatons, and should she make a mistake later and have to explain her actions to the town guards, she's got a lot more intellect to work with when persuading or lying to them thanks to her edge, which will continue to help her out in such a scenario. It is very common, and in fact is often a house rule in many Cypher System games that players calculate the total cost of all powers activated and levels of effort into one total cost, and then subtract edge from this number. This approach is in fact how I ran Numenera games for years until the rule was discussed in more depth on an episode of Cypher Unlimited. This is technically not how the rules are intended to be used. This particular rules confusion has been a topic of discussion around the community and is even how automated systems like the Cypher system rule sheet in Roll20 operates by default. Shout out to none other than the ancient albatross himself for our discussion on this rule and helping me get it right for my tables. Nine times out of 10, the eventual cost of your pool will not make a difference whether you add them up or apply edge to one at a time. It's only around higher tier play that this makes a difference. 
usually. For some groups, house ruling edge to apply after totaling up all your activation and effort costs might make for a smoother game. Sticking to the rules as written and intended, however, can be made much easier by thinking of edge as an inexhaustible source of pool points that can be applied to one function at a time, be it applying effort or activating an ability. Think of each step you're taking in your character's action and see which one makes more sense for edge to cover or subtract from in order to guarantee the correct amount is deducted from your pool. After a few times of doing this, it starts to feel very natural, and as a bonus, it helps to clarify each step you're taking in an action. It is often the case that while playing an RPG, one gets the rules mixed up, confused, or wrong based on what's written in the book. These opportunities should be embraced, and we should feel free to try out new systems even if we don't understand them. Mixing up something like edge and effort is a perfectly normal part of learning the cipher system, and it's a great opportunity to revisit the text of the books, analyze how these mechanics allow for interactive storytelling and engaging games, and then apply them later on in new and exciting ways. Learning how to use a rule system as is written in the book is a common enough challenge that we don't need to feel intimidated by the process. And if an incorrect understanding of the rules leads to a more satisfying house rule, one that makes more sense for everyone at the table, that's all the better. One of the greatest gifts of the hobby of TTRPGs is that it gives us the freedom to get it right next time. If you have any tips on learning how to use edge and effort, please feel free to share them in the comments section, and be sure to give a like, share, and subscribe to The Infinite Construct for more Numenera and Cypher System videos.